Today's Morning Coffee Vinyl Side Long John Baldry, Baldry's Out, 1979 Today's album is another Vancouver fantastic vinyl selection, an opportunity for Morning Coffee Vinyl Side to feature an album by a Vancouver-based artist or an artist with a significant Vancouver connection. Baldry's Out was Vancouver adoptee Long John Baldry's first album after immigrating to Canada from the UK in the late 70s. One of the original young British blues disciples of the 1960s that worshipped at the altar of the early American bluesman, Long John Baldry got his start in music in the late 50s during a period when jazz, folk, blues, and skiffle all existed simultaneously as part of the same scene. A legendary figure, the six-foot, seven-inch tall Long John Baldry, is often credited as the first to sing in front a proper British blues band. He played with pre-Stones era Mick Jagger and Charlie Watts, gave both Rod Stewart and Elton John their first jobs as a band leader, and flirted with success as a pop balladeer in the late 60s before recommitting himself to the blues in the 70s onwards. Plagued by mental health issues, particularly depression, and some generalized ill health from poverty, lifestyle, and hereditary origin most of his life, Baldry came to Canada for a fresh start after a tumultuous time in the UK through the 70s that included hospitalizations after bouts of self-harm and what was often coined as a nervous breakdown. Baldry's out refers to several different things. Out of the UK. Out of the asylum. Out of whatever funk ailed him at the time, including a few failed relationships, and of course, out as an explicit public acknowledgement of his sexuality and self-identification as a gay man. Recorded in Toronto, Baldry's Out is a very strong effort by a man that was embracing and being embraced by his new country. The album has its own origin story, immortalized in a spoken word introduction, and the song Baldry's Out which very much serves as a shedding of skin, a ritualized cleanse of an old story and identity to mark a new point of departure in Renaissance. He calls Canada the promised land, and you can't help but imagine him bathing in its milk and sweet honey. Baldry's voice was deep and strong, befitting of his tall stature, and giving him an air of authenticity and authority that could only come from a man who'd done some living. It's a voice that communicated a knowingness of things and self, a voice that was as naked as naked could be while dressed in thick furs to keep out the cold. Now what exactly do I mean by that turn of phrase? No idea. Just go with it though because it sounds kind of cool. The album is most famous for Baldry's cover of the Righteous Brothers hit You've Lost That Love and Feeling performed in duet with future collaborator Kathy MacDonald. Considered by many to be the best cover of the song, and even a rival to the original, Kathy, former Big Brother and the Holding Company vocalist and Washington State native, would remain part of Baldry's band for 25 years. Now, it's my belief that this duet inspired several early 80s mixed duets including Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warren's 1982 Academy Award-winning recording of Up Where We Belong. Though Baldry and McDonald did have a bit of a hit in their hands, they really created the appetite that others would ride to bigger success shortly thereafter. Sometimes the cost of being first is that you plant the seeds that others harvest then feed on. There are several really good songs and performances across both sides of Baldry's Out that speak to Baldry's depth and range. He'd stay in Toronto until 84 when he became naturalized and moved to Vancouver where he lived and worked and mentored many budding musicians on the Vancouver scene while serving as an elder statesman and international ambassador to not just the blues but the history of popular music and the British invasion of the 60s and 70s. He loved Vancouver very much, and I remember him as a generous and kind soul, even though 
my association with him was very tertiary. Unfortunately, John's various illnesses continued to plague him through his last 20 years, and his last 10 were particularly arduous, and the outpouring of love from friends, old and new, while he dealt with several debilitating and painful conditions, were a reflection of his true riches. John passed away in 2005, and the last piece of music he heard while surrounded by friends and family before leaving this world was Sister Rosetta Sharp's Up Above My Head. Now how beautifully sad and wonderful a thing is that.